This is Dave Garrick with Atlas Screen Supply. David Gross with Condi Systems. Hello, this is Jimmy Lamb with Sawgrass. This is Lon Winters with Graphic Elephants. And you're listening to Two Regular Guys Podcast. 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 Hosted by Aaron Montgomery and Terry Combs. Coming to you live from a condemned outhouse on the wrong side of the tracks. Somewhere dark, dirty, and dank. All right. You have to love that intro from Jimmy Lamb there. Uh, (laughs) Welcome to the show, everybody. It is Friday, July 12, 2019, and I am Eric Campbell sitting in today for the legendary Terry Combs, who you can find at every trade show anywhere, (laughs) but you can also find it at equipmentzone.com and terrycombs.com, but you'll find me here and at (laughs) ericcampbell.com. Uh, excellent. Thanks for uh, sitting in, Eric. I appreciate you uh, taking the reins for Terry. Yes, he, uh, that guy gets some frequent flyer miles. That's for darn sure. <laughs> yeah, more than anybody ever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. Well, I'm Aaron Montgomery, and you can find me over at AaronMontgomery.info. Uh, today, we're going to welcome in Joe Ortna, who's been a, a frequent contributor to the show. He's got several five things and, and all sorts of great stuff, but he's actually going to be on the show with us today. And uh, he's going to discuss the design and style guide that uh, he's put together for his shop. And uh, you guys will remember from our April 12th show that uh, Jay Bissell was on and, and Jay's been kind of creating this guide for a design and style guide. And uh, so this is kind of the, the invention creation of this. And um, so Jay mentioned that back on the 12th and uh, we're, we're calling him out. It's time to bring that bad boy live. <laughs> no, anyhow, um, <laughs> yeah, anyhow, right. we're, we're going to, we're going to talk more about that. And I think really you guys are going to be pretty uh, excited to kind of get that too, because I think once we go through what we've got here with Joe, uh, you're going to really see how it can be transformational. I, I'm just super impressed with what Joe's got going on over there at uh, Orton Howe art and uh, some some great stuff so we're going to have him here in just a second eric but uh what news came across your desk this week well we have something that's really a little bit more from the world of home embroidery but something i thought was impressive anyway and that yeah. uh coming out of a printware magazine uh, bernina of america partners with an anti-human trafficking nonprofit. so uh bernina formed a part- partnership with wreath threaded so this is a nonprofit that provides a second chance at life uh, through employment for survivors of human trafficking. So based in Jacksonville, Florida, ReThreaded provides them employment opportunities, and they get roles in production, inventory, sales, marketing, and finance, and they're selling accessories like handbags and throws uh, and the like. They generate funds to help survivors and put them on track toward a new career. So the cool thing about this is this has benefited more than 4,000 women to date, uh, and the two organizations together, um, they established this partnership and it's going to help to raise more than $14,000 for rethreaded. So cool things to see happening and kind of more in the embroidery and sewing world, but couldn't help but want to bring that up because I always love to see a story where, you know, kind of corporate America giving back and uh, giving something to people who are disadvantaged. And honestly, we always like to see a story where um, work and good work helps people to uh, get beyond those bad situations. Yeah, definitely. So uh, good stuff there. We'll, we'll get a link to that posted up in the, in the show notes here this weekend when I get the show up. Um, so really good stuff. Thanks for sharing that, Eric. Um, oh, let's see. What, uh, what I saw is uh, Stalls has announced an August 2019 workshop weekend event. I thought that was kind of cool. Um, the August workshop weekend event presented by Stalls and Transfer Express will focus on top 10 marketing strategies you need to fuel your business. Uh, how to market your business will run from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. on August 10th. And it's going to be at uh, several of their locations all at the same time. So, uh, so I guess that'll be uh, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. in whatever time zone you happen to be going to, but uh, <laughs> Arizona, California, Michigan, Ohio, awesome. and Texas showrooms will uh, be the training facility. So the cost is uh, $29.95 per person for those classes. So we'll get a link to that up in, in our show notes there as well. Um, That's very so cool. Some good stuff there. Yeah. So um, we let's see yeah. here. Let's, we, got, we got some regulators checking in here too. Uh, Eric, we've got awesome. uh, Christine... Shreve, uh, as usual, says uh, good morning, Eric morning, and, uh, and Aaron and Terry, wherever you are. Um, <laughs> and then <laughs> we've got Jeff checking in here as well. So good morning, good Jeff. Morning, Jeff. And Christine. Oh, I'm sorry, Christine. Cheryl. <laughs> Cheryl <laughs> Cheryl back, yeah. Over here. Uh, Nancy <laughs> checking in says looking forward to hearing about Orton Now Art. Uh, so I think that's somebody that uh, that Joe may know. I'm looking at the names. <laughs> <laughs> just, just possibly. 
You got uh, some yeah, hometown uh, advantage there, sir. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, Jeff also has some big news to share, and I, I did happen to see a little bit about this. Um, I actually okay. happen to be friends with uh, Gerald Matryler on uh, on Facebook. He's been on the show before, and mm -hmm. for those of you who don't know who he is, he's one of the uh, the higher ups over there at Corel. And, and Jeff says Corel is being sold as big news this week. Lots of us rely on their software for our business. So, yeah, definitely. This is true. Um, so maybe. Uh, in fact, that reminds me of probably a good good idea to uh, reach out to to Gerald and uh, see if we can get him to come on and talk about that because his post sounded pretty positive. He thinks that uh, that it sounds like it's going to be a good thing for for people, and and he's a guy that I trust for sure. So uh, good stuff there. Oh yeah, and I mean that that's integral to both sides. I mean we talk about print and embroidery kind of separate sides sometimes, but Corel Draw is all over all of those sides. I mean they're integrated with everything, so definitely something we should follow up on. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So yeah, it looks like uh, it, this is uh, the B Live that we use here for <laughs> this uh, broadcast is in the 2.0 beta version that we're using. Um, so yes, there may be some blurriness to it, and we apologize for that. Uh, <laughs> nobody came here to see our faces, though, Eric. I, I I don't believe. I think they came to hear the information. So uh, apologize for the blurriness that's happening there. I will uh, report that to the beta team and see if we can figure it out uh yeah sometimes live internet broadcasting just doesn't like uh like things so <laughs> <laughs> well you know we have those faces made for radio so i think we'll, <laughs> we'll be fine if we're a little blurry folks <laughs> that's, that's right that's right that's right all right well i think we've said good morning to everybody so let's keep yeah. rolling here eric absolutely and as we're here i want to make sure we thank our regular listeners as we now call them the regulators thank you for showing up mount up regulators we're here and yeah. any of you new listeners tuning in today we really want you to kick in if you have an idea for a future show go to the contact us page at two regular guys.com that's the number two regular guys.com or reach out to us on social media and we're everywhere as two regular guys so if you're catching on live via facebook live please jump in and participate please comment and with that let's hear a word from our gold sponsors and brilliance this episode of the two regular guys is brought to you by bright and leap makers of the reggie award-winning and brilliance embroidery software and brilliance is different you don't need hardware dongles or to trade active seats for every user one license lets you run every computer in your shop at once. Embrilliance runs natively on both Mac and Windows. Your single license lets you install on both platforms. Embrilliance is modular. If you only need customizing with lettering, sizing, and recoloring, you can get just that. Embrilliance's unique stitch processing tools even allow you to resize and improve expanded stitch files from digitizers or stock collections for faster running, lighter embroideries. If you decide you need fully featured digitizing, it's fast and easy to add powerful design creation tools to your system. You can start with any tool and build your ideal kit. All Embrilliance programs run standalone or work together in their unified platform. See the difference for yourself at Embrilliance.com. Two Regular Guys listeners can enter the exclusive code 2RG, that's the number 2RG, at Embrilliance.com slash store for 10% off your entire purchase. And uh, thanks again to Brighton Leap for their support. Love to see all the cool stuff going on in Brilliance right now and love having that code. So go get that 10% off. Uh, though they are our gold sponsor over at Brighton Leap, we still have sponsorship opportunities available. So if you want to be on the Two Regular Guys, get your message heard. Check out the details at tworegularguys.com slash sponsorship. Excellent. Yes. And again, thanks very much to uh, Brighton Leap and Brilliance for their support. Uh, that code is really cool. I, I love the fact that we can also give back to uh, to the folks that, that tune in regularly. Um, and I did just want to toss this comment up here, Eric, because mm -hmm. I like to pat myself on the back um, a little bit. <laughs> Christine says, I think you're both adorable. So we well, very much appreciate it, Christine. Nice. Uh, <laughs> you're, you're very kind. <laughs> yeah, very, very kind. Uh, and maybe we need to get some new glasses. But <laughs> uh, potentially, I mean, like, personality does a lot for people <laughs> yeah, totally, totally. all right well good stuff well let's dive in let's get joe in here eric and uh we'll, we'll get uh, get this party really started um all right so before opening the doors at Ort now art uh in july of 2015 joe was a graphic designer for about 10 years in those 10 years joe has been a graphic designer at a trade show exhibit manufacturer it was the dedicated graphic designer for an entire school district in Charleston, South Carolina, and worked as a graphic designer for a printer that produced primary paper products before moving to Ohio. The last position where he was introduced to screen printing for the first time and the connection between his love of design and random t-shirt collection was finally made. <laughs> Once Joe found his true design passion with the decorated apparel, the business took off quickly. 
only after a few months of owning his first machine, a direct to garment machine, while printing out of his home at night, uh, working full time during the day. The story of most screen printers, I think, <laughs> and decorators <laughs> <right>. in general. <laughs> Joe was able to quit his full time employment and focus on building Ort Now Art. So, welcome to the show, Joe. Hi, thank you. Thank you for having me. It's uh, yeah, I mean, awesome to be here. <laughs> it's awesome Very to cool. have you here. I mean, yeah. seriously, the topic you're bringing up is something I cannot wait to dig into because this is something that I'm a big proponent of myself. Um, <laughs> dial guides, right? Uh, it seems like you're actually inspired by some educational events. And I know we have a, a friend of the show, Jay Bissell, to thank for that. But could you tell us a little bit about the event that started you on this journey of rebranding? Uh, yeah, I think pretty sure you're referring to uh, the inaugural shirt lab that happened yeah. in uh, yeah. Columbus, Ohio back in October last fall. So uh, a little sidebar on that. That was actually the first industry related event that I attended. Wow. So I hope I didn't spoil myself because it was such an amazing <laughs> event. <laughs> but um, uh, at that event, uh, Jay started us off. He was the first speaker of the day. And, you know, he's going through his presentation and everything he's saying is just resonating with me. And I'm even listening to him and looking down. They gave us all name tags. I'm like <laughs> peeking down at my name tag, looking at my own logo, thinking, well, from a customer standpoint, does that speak decorated apparel to you? And, I, you know, the answer is no. No, this logo was created back when uh, I was doing freelance work on the side. Mm -hmm. And while I liked the look of the symbol with the O and the A combined, uh, yeah. reverse there, um, you know, from the customer's point of view, they, they couldn't really uh, identify with it. Mm -hmm. And then um, the uh, style guide that Jay was talking about, what you say was back on? April 12th yeah, show. Yeah. Yeah. He, he yeah. talked about it more detail on our show. Yeah, April he truly 12th. Did. I mean, right. Obviously he talked about it during that, that event uh, that, that you mentioned there, the shirt lab. And I think you may have spoiled yourself, Joe. I don't know for sure. No, I'm going to say like uh, what a perfect attendee here. So I'm going to pat Joe on the back early uh, that he's like, immediately cognizant of what's going on and self-aware. <laughs> I have some people who come up and go, so I listened to everything you said, but I have no idea what you just said. <laughs> so, the fact oh, that you were wow. already on board, I think Jay got spoiled too. So, yeah. <laughs> so, so, um, so yeah, tell us, tell us what kind of Jay talked about at that event then, Joe, what, what was kind of the, the start for you? Um, so uh, he went through his presentation and, you know, he's talking about, uh, well, we'll dive into it once we, uh, yeah, you know, yeah, go through the different steps of it. But he he actually, I think, developed the style guide a little bit after the event. And I had signed up for uh, the Shirt Lab Fast Track calls, which, you know, once a week, we everybody that signed up for it, we all get on a call and go over the presentation and what we're planning to do and kind of spitball ideas for each other. And yeah. he, he sent us the style guide, the first version of it, um, a couple of days before his phone call, which, if I'm remembering correctly, was the first one. And... Um, that's kind of where we got all the information on that. So, yeah. Cool. cool. <laughs> well, then, 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 then start telling us about that. We want to hear more about that. Talk to us about the order of events you should take if you're, you're kind of looking to rebrand your shop here. Yeah, definitely. All right. So Jay outlines a uh, six step process and I'll just go through them one at a time and basically uh, lay out my experience and what I was feeling while I was going through the entire process. So oh. um, step one is identifying your story, message, and values, right? So in this section, he gives you a list of, it was about 15 questions or so, that you just go through them and you answer them. And the ones that kind of uh, sit, have the strongest feeling that you're getting, uh -huh. um, resonate the most with you or the ones you end up using to uh, kind of develop a story for your shop. So okay. uh, the three questions on the list that uh, kind of hit home with me were, what do you love most about your business? <clears throat> what do you stand for? And then what is the single most important idea that you want customers in your community to know? And yeah. kind of the goal with this section of the style guide is to get you to um, produce a one or two paragraph basic. Um, it's kind of <clears throat> the reason your business exists, really. Yeah, yeah. And your, your why, why you do statement. what you do, right? Yeah. 
So will you share with us what your answers to those things were? Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Put you on the let, spot me, here. let me pull them up. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, I'm putting All you right. on the spot totally, but uh, I love hearing this stuff. So <laughs> uh, what do you love most about your business? And for this one, I could remember the exact moment when it hit me. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah. <clears throat> I was checking out at the grocery store and, you know, I'm sitting there getting ready to pay, insert my credit card in or whatever. And I take a look back in the line and about three or four people back, I see uh, a T-shirt that we had recently printed. Someone's wearing it. Wow. And cool. <clears throat> in that moment, that huge sense of pride that hits you, yeah. you know. <clears throat> yeah. So for me, it was, um, I guess, just that feeling of seeing it in everyday life. I worked as a graphic designer for Charleston County School District for five years. And every employee in that district, which had 87 schools, this is teachers included, could use me for creating graphics for them. And in those five years, I saw my work out in public one time. Oh, and it really? was a bumper sticker. <clears throat> uh, uh, so okay. working in a small town in Ohio now where we're doing decorated apparel, I see stuff almost every day. It's it's like the highlight of our day. If someone comes in wearing one of our shirts, we, we always point it out. We're like, hey, nice shirt. <laughs> Things along those <laughs> those lines so oh, very cool um the second question what do you stand for uh always being honest so for me when i'm dealing with my customers it, it's an honest answer like yeah. even if it's awesome. something where you know there's gonna be you know tough production or whatever you know we'll try our yeah. best you know something for along sure. those lines uh yeah yeah, yeah Frank, <clears> that's really awesome cool. And then that third question, what is the single most important idea that you want your customers and community to know? And my answer was that when they use us for their decorated apparel, they will be getting the highest quality product that we can provide that goes both with artwork and printing. Cool. So. Wow. Awesome. All right. Well, I'll try to stop throwing uh, curveballs at you, Joe. But, uh, totally I just have my answers to all of his questions pulled up yes. just in case. I like being <laughs> yeah, prepared. Right. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. I knew you were going to be a rock here, star. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> cool. All right. Nope. So what's the second part in the process here? Okay. Step two is identify your style and mood. All right. So in this section, you're given, I think there's 10 or so options. It's uh one word or phrase on one side and another word or phrase on the other side. I'm trying to center myself in the camera here. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't worry. <laughs> and I you go through <laughs> and you number, your answer is a number between one and 10. Um, one, you resonate the most with that one, you know, two, 10, you resonate the most with that one. So yeah. um, <laughs> uh, the two examples that I had the strongest feelings towards were, uh, simple and uncomplicated or complex and intricate. Mm. And I answered one for simple and uncomplicated. I like keeping things simple. And then uh, angry and irate or happy and satisfied. <laughs> and hopefully you guys realize I answered 10 there yeah. for happy and <laughs> satisfied. <laughs> I mean, I have to say, I want to see the company that are like, no, nah, totally angry and irate, man. Yeah. All the way. That's the way hey. I know. Yeah. 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 There are, hey, I, I, I'm sure there's plenty of people that are successful in that space, though, you know, like, angry at the world. You know? Right. <laughs> That's a new niche for me, man. Yeah. I mean, they have their audience, right? Yeah, right. right. That's right. That's right. Cool. <laughs> And All right. Yeah, that, that covers that section. Okay. So, so what was the third? Uh, yeah. mood. Mm. Uh, those, you know, my, my next strongest answer was uh, a seven. So I really only kind of stuck with those, those two. So in terms of the feeling of when people come in the shop, we're keeping things as simple as possible for customers. And then, you know, we, we like this happy go lucky feeling where you're talking to your friend and not, not someone who, you know, it's not a business transaction. It's yeah, a friendship. Cool. Well, that's a great way to do business for sure. <clears throat> All right. So what, so what comes next in the process? Step three, uh, create the guidelines for your logo. And the thing I want to stress here is this is the guidelines for your logo, not create your logo. So creating, uh, creating the logo should mm -hmm. take place after you go through all six steps. Right. Okay. And um, I, you know, I looked initially on our little outline put that I had done the logo last, but I re-listened to one of the uh, fast track calls. I had actually gotten started on it quite a bit earlier than that. <laughs> but anyway, so I had started it initially. And then uh, once we got the first version of the style guide, kind of uh, put a pause on 
uh, the creation <laughs> of the logo, went through the style guide, completed it. And then, you know, finishing it and putting the final touches on it then was really simple because mm -hmm. I had all of the information that I needed to include in the logo then. And um, kind of the way I would put it into perspective for people that haven't gone through the process yet is, uh, do you guys like customers that come to you and they're prepared? They know, you know, what information they want in their design in terms of what type of picture and uh, mm -hmm. what kind of wording. Or do you like when someone comes in and says, oh, you know what you're doing, just put something together. <laughs> That's the worst yeah, thing that I don't print, being printed, you know? <laughs> Everybody always says they're like, oh, it's great creative freedom. And I think that's right. one of the worst things you ever hear is like, you know, it's cool because this this is the beginning of like 15 versions, which is the same right. thing with your logo. You jump in. I know it's like, I think you're probably like me a little bit like if your skill set is to do a particular thing, you want to jump on that thing first. You do graphic design, so you're like, okay, right. doing the logo first because that's where I'm comfortable at. I'm the same way where I'm like, move into a new branding opportunity. I go, okay, I'm going to make gear. Like I need to be, <laughs> like I'm already making gear. We don't even know what we're doing yet. Yeah, it's like, the logo can't be all of it. Right. I think I actually got on my computer Sunday morning and was like, all right, let's get this going. Because <laughs> you come up with right. an amazing event and you're like all fired up and you want to get going, yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you totally want to just dive right in for sure. Cool. Especially right. after Dave gets up there. He, he's he's just a ball of fire, so it's hard not to follow up on this. He's stuff. a little he's energetic. Up. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit, Jay. Definitely. All the love in the world, dude. But yeah. <laughs> he's got a little bit high energy. Okay. Nice. So on uh, creating your guidelines. So there's, there's questions that also go over... Um, uh, you know, more intricate aspects of logo design, like spacing, kerning, if people aren't familiar with that, kerning is like the spacing between your letters. And um, uh, one recommendation I do like to make is research your colors. Uh, I, on my first logo version, right, I yeah. my favorite color is blue. So back then I was like, yep, logo's being blue. So uh, <laughs> I had to take a step away from that and look from the customer's point of view. Do those colors resonate with the customer's identification of my business, right? So uh, the easiest way to find out what colors really mean is honestly just Google it. What is, what is the meaning of colors? <laughs> first three links will probably give you good answers. I think I went with the first one, whatever it was. And um, uh, blue ended up standing for trust and peace and can suggest loyalty so with the trust there if you remember my answer to what do you stand for was always being honest so yeah. hit the nail on the head there ironically got really lucky and then uh <laughs> our tagline <laughs> now is we print shirts that deserve hangers and so i felt like that hits towards the loyalty suggestion from the color blue and then what was next <laughs> <laughs> oh, definitely. When you're picking your colors, get out that Fantone pan or the Pantone fan book and select your colors from there. That will guarantee that no matter who produces your logo and marketing in the future, your colors are going to be represented the way that they should be. And cool. well, on that note, I'm going to go ahead and just jump in on the embroidery side and say, if you have an embroiderer friend or you embroider yourself, get out your <laughs> thread card for your favorite brand. and yep. <laughs> Write it down somewhere. <laughs> Write it down, put it in the style yeah. guide. I mean, I wish everybody could see because we've gotten to see your style guide, which, by the way, awesome document, well put together. Thank um, you. Put that put that material in there. That is part of what it should is, be in there. Your yeah, colors, your thread. that is missing. Thread colors. I'm gonna write that thread down. Thread colors. Put it in there, there man. <laughs> but yeah, everybody get get your threads. I didn't mean to call you out on thread colors. <laughs> I forgot that. No, one but no, this yeah. Is, when you pick your educational for me as well. <laughs> well, Perfect. Absolutely. And the reason I tell people to do it is because if you leave it to Pantone, thread is a really subjective thing. The light hits it in a different way on the high sides and on the oh, low yeah. sides. So if you have access to look at some thread yourself, absolutely do it yourself in person. Even if you don't embroider yourself, ask your embroidery buddy, which you, if you're listening to this show, you probably have one. And right. check out some thread <laughs> cones and pick a color for it. It's good to have that on file. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> cool. I learned something today. Yay. There we go. <laughs> yeah, we can we can just call it a day. Let's go home. I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> Look, there's three more steps. <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay. More steps. We'll, we'll, we'll more keep steps. going then, Joe. All Let's right. Let's keep All it right. going. All right. <laughs> so uh, step four is create a theme with the use of iconography. Sorry, I had to sign that, sound that one out a little bit. And symbols. Yeah. yeah it's okay. And um, 
So my original logo, I've mentioned several times now, didn't identify yeah. with, um, you know, decorated apparel. And I was trying to figure out what kind of icon to include that would get that point across really quickly. And uh, Jay, in his presentation, and I think back on when he was on on April 12th, quoted Don Donald Miller. And I don't remember the exact quote, but, you know, the, the gist of it was people don't buy the best products they buy from the company that they can identify with the quick, the quickest. Yeah. And I remember, yeah. you know, that you think about that and it seems like a pretty true statement. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. um, the, the icon I decided need definitely needed to be incorporated in there was a t-shirt of some sort. So it makes maybe, sense. Your t-shirt printer makes sense. Right? <laughs> yeah. Don't and then, um, so step five is establish your voice or tone. And this one, there's a list of questions again, uh, about 10, they were all about between 10 and 15. And this one helps you establish how you're going to interact with customers, what kind of tone and language you're gonna use. And, uh, you know, we went through the questions and I liked, in the past, we've always had like a friendly atmosphere. And so that's yeah. what we, we decided to go with. And this also helps you establish like time frame for how long to respond and you know the tone you use via email and stuff like that. And if you happen to have uh, standard operating procedures, uh, copying and pasting from this section for how to interact with a customer would just be, I mean, what what's in there? Just yeah, cool. It, it, it sets cool. you up nicely for that. It's a big thing. <laughs> Establishing voice is a big thing. Uh, people forget that there's a very different sound. In fact, that was the thing we talked recently about. Um, uh, Aaron talked recently about. Uh, emails, automated emails, how emails sound. Right. Um, and that's a big deal. People don't think about the way your language sounds. It's not just about being correct or grammatically correct, which you should do, but it, it really is a different <laughs> attitude. Like if you come across like a friend or if you use casual tone or hey, even if you use contractions in your language, uh, I'm gonna let my English degree show. <laughs> There's a difference between <laughs> speaking conversationally and being really robotic. And I think sometimes people like that kind of, and I always refer to it, this is bad, like 80s corporate speak where everything sounds like it's somehow been derived from a machine language <laughs> where, or if you're going to address people like people and it is different, you have to think about those things. So that's yeah. awesome that that's part of the process. Yeah. Yeah. yeah everything I, I is your brand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wholeheartedly agree. You know, like, like Eric said, we talked about this recently and I talked about it over on my small business Saturdays. It's not just like you said about the grammar and getting that right. And it, it's, it's how you're coming across, you know, most of the things that we write or most of the policies, the standard operating procedures that Joe's talking about, a lot of times those are written in a, uh, as a response, as a, mm. we're frustrated with something that just happened to us. And yeah, we never go true. back and we never yeah. go back and correct those things, you know, and, and, and Unfortunately, then that's what carries forward. So if you have this guide in place, you're never going to have to worry about that because you're always, if you're following that guide, then you're going to be able to, to go, you know what, that's not the tone that I want. I don't want to tell the customer they're an idiot, even though maybe <laughs> they did something that was not so smart. <laughs> I want to be friendly and nice and, 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 uh, you know, say, Hey, this, but honest with them as well. Like, like Joe had said, so that's, that's some great stuff. Um, before I, I'm going to, just pause you for one second, Joe, because I wanted sure. to get a couple of the comments that we've got here too. So I'm going to go back a little ways here and uh, I don't know how these, yeah, these kind of get uh, cut off on the <laughs> screen here, but it says the single most important idea for lack of a better word, so important. So many companies have branding that suffers because they can't articulate what the main idea is that they want to communicate. So that's from Christine Shreve. Um, let's see here. She, she's got she's just coming in strong got great stuff uh, nice. color <laughs> identification and what colors mean to people are a big part of brand identity i've written yeah. a couple of articles about this and color theory is very fascinating and mm -hmm. and which is really totally fascinating to somebody like me you know i'm not a graphic designer i'm not you know and that stuff never really but the more i research and the more you look at that kind of stuff what what joe was saying you know what does that color mean says a lot you know as i was helping my wife set up her business that was actually the first thing we did was research the colors that resonated with her and with the message she wanted to do. And those colors, the hex numbers are actually on the very first page of her business plan. So right. um, yeah. I think that's, that's really nice. important stuff there. Um, well, and so the great thing about all of this, when you put it all together, everything that we're talking about so far, I know we're going to keep referring to this. Branding isn't just the logo and the motto. 
it's not like we're just doing a logo and a slogan and everything else. It is the full story of who you are and it's how you treat your customers and how you communicate. Every experience a, a customer has with you is branding. Everything that they perceive from you is branding. So having this established, and the other thing I'd like to say about the, once again, about the voice or tone, I want to go back to that. I know I'm <laughs> hammering on this, <laughs> but I've seen people have trouble when they hire on, especially new CSRs. Uh, you hire on a new person who's doing customer service and they're not speaking the way you want your brand to speak. If you have this document and you hand it to them, they're like, this is what I want you to sound like. This is yeah. when you approach a customer, right. especially a new businesses who haven't had an employee yet. And sometimes the first thing they do is hire somebody, you know, to be kind of front desk or to do reception or to do customer service. That's an awesome thing to hand to somebody and go, you know, don't ask, you don't have to ask me every time I have a customer in here. Here are our operating policies. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to be honest. I want you to be friendly, make it easy, be there, you know, be comfortable and you know, laid back with them. And that's the operating procedure to start from. I mean, that's that's also valuable to them because I mean, the employees don't have to then guess what you expect out of them. Right. So this is great stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Um, in fact, going off of that, Eric, I actually had a customer service rep that worked for me uh, a while back and she interviewed great. Her personality was fantastic. And that's what I loved about her was just that, that personality. Every time you talk to her in person, it was fantastic. And, and, you know, that's, I wanted her personality to come through and everything that she did because she was just super kind and caring and had a ton of empathy. And then she would write emails and it's like you said, it, it's, it seemed like a robot talking, you know, thank <laughs> you. Yeah. Please contact our office for more details. It's like, <laughs> what happened to that personality? How come you, you know, so we really had to work on that. You know, I said, uh, you know, it was really a, a constant sitting down and, and having that conversation about let that same personality that you're interacting with me right now come through in your emails. And that just was foreign to her yeah. for some reason. So again, <laughs> having these things in place, having that, that stuff in place gives you those tools to be able to for sure kind of point to those things. So um, let's see here. A couple more things that before we get back and we're hijacking your show here, Joe, but um, <laughs> your show. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm along for uh, the ride. <laughs> nice. so Terry says, uh, I have, I have as a speaking voice and the voice in my head, never unleash the one in your head. <laughs> I love Terry. She's, yeah, uh, baby. She's fantastic. Um, but then Jeff's got a really good, uh, good point here. It says, don't forget your contracts and disclaimers. They are important part of your brand never let yeah. a lawyer write one yes they should read and comment uh but author it no um i think that's really good <laughs> uh, sure, and then sure. uh marcy has a great tip here some emails are redundant and require the same answer in part or whole write it and save as a draft lather rinse and repeat for efficiencies which is a good stuff i would even take that one step further and say uh, that makes great content for your blog that will get you seo because those are the common questions sure. and that becomes uh, a frequently asked question portion of your website and you can basically refer to it and and plus that gets the keywords and stuff out there so anyhow all right joe wh where did we leave off let's let's get back into Last this step. i think uh, we're at no, step six right we are on step six so all bringing right, cool. in the home stretch here uh, <laughs> it is titled mistakes to avoid and this honestly is just little golden nuggets straight from jay about marketing <laughs> and uh the one that uh, hit the most with me was um, avoid listing out products and services on your business card. And that used to be the backside of my business card. <laughs> it's clean and simple, right? <laughs> nice. And, uh, yeah. um, you know, there's, well, I don't know, there's almost 20 of them. And it's just things that <laughs> you see people do and you're like, Ooh, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, like things like keep it simple or with your logo, do one, two or three color at most, stuff like that along those lines. So Very cool. I don't want to awesome. give out all the secrets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we would just read off his entire, you know, published <laughs> list right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, he's got he's got it right. You know, avoiding listing out your products. This is something I've had to do when dealing with e-commerce with people. I've had a lot of embroidery shops, especially back in the day, they would jump on and go, we have 68 heads of embroidery. And I'm like, your customer may not know what an embroidery head is on a machine, <laughs> let alone care. do they care. <laughs> yeah, do they yeah. care how many heads you have? <laughs> so honestly, if you jump on and just be like, here are all the lists of equipment. I remember people literally listing off brands of equipment. I'm like, Nobody but us knows about that. No one cares. <laughs> so back off some of that stuff. Sell you just sell the result of what you're doing, not the equipment you do it on. 
Yeah. And yeah. honestly, same thing with the processes. Sometimes people are like, I told everybody I do sublimation. I'm like, I know people who do sublimation who can't describe it correctly, let alone <laughs> to, do our customers know what it is. So, you know, sublimination? Sublimation. Sublimination, yeah. Sublimation, <laughs> sublimation printing. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, let's keep let's keep this rolling, Eric. We, we've got uh, more great stuff to get to here, and, and uh, I'm sure we'll run out of time as we normally do. So. Uh, we all, yeah, we're all getting close to bonus time. But yeah. as we've said before, one of these the clear messages we've come up with, everything that you've told us before uh, before this and everything about the process is a great deal more than creating the logo. But, you, you know, come on, you're doing design. I like design. Let's talk about the logo part of the equation. Like, Tell us yeah, a little definitely. bit about the process of creating the new logo. <clears throat> Okay, so me personally as a designer, I've always been a huge fan of logos that have, uh, you know, a hidden or subliminal message in them. Yeah. And uh, I have two examples. I gave those to you, Aaron. Um, yeah. The first one is the FedEx logo. And yeah. everybody knows that FedEx does shipping, right? Their brand is known pretty much everywhere. But um, if you look at their logo closely between the capital E and lowercase x at the end, they, that open area actually makes the shape of an arrow. And that to me is a subliminal message that was completely intentional on their behalf that resonates with their customers. You know, it's not registering, but subconsciously with the people that are looking at it, that yeah, they're gonna be able to take our, our items and get them from one place to another safely. <clears throat> so uh, that was one example. The other one, and this is probably, <clears throat> excuse me, probably my favorite logo I've ever seen is uh, Spartan Golf. And when you look at it initially, I was a caddy for nine years, so I picked up on it really quick. But um, <laughs> you're like, yeah, this is a, a guy swinging a golf club, right? And then you read the logo below, or the, the name of the company below, it's Spartan Golf. And it's like, wait a second, that's also a Spartan head, right? <clears throat> so, ah, yeah. So that's... it's just, uh, you know, the subconscious identifies with it both ways. And this one's a little more direct than, you know, the FedEx logo, but um, yeah. So my, that's, my that's really goal cool. was kind of with my logo, I wanted something like this in there as well. So, you know, you go back to the icon iconography <clears throat> and I had said a t-shirt I wanted to be represented. So that was really easy. Or now art is my name, you know, my company name, you hollow out the, the O or whatever with the shape of a t-shirt. <clears throat> That's that one's a piece of cake. It's done. But I know through the studies of my own business that, sorry, I'll hold that up there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that, that, um, I'm clicking up a whole bunch of stuff. Over there. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, 85% of the things I produce are screen printed here currently. Yeah, so yeah. I wanted to get another kind of icon in there that would represent that. And we, we do manual press printing here. So the thing I thought, would be nice to incorporate in there was a squeegee. So if you take on my logo and cover up this portion yeah. of the A, I'll the put o, you a full screen there so you can see. Yeah, <laughs> O and that leg of the A kind of resemble a uh, manual printing squeegee. Awesome. So a little bit of a subliminal message there in it. So that's what yeah. I was aiming for with it. Very came cool. out kind of nice <laughs> in my yeah, opinion. Yeah, really nice. Oh, ours as well. <laughs> yeah, people love that stuff. I mean, having that identification, having something where people can have another layer to it, I think it always adds to that identification. It adds to some of the, you know, it's not just the branding. I think it says something about you. It says something about the care you're taking. It says something about how much thought you put into your logo, too. So I All think right. that's that is important stuff, and especially with your message. Nice, nice, very cool Good stuff. So, Terry says, uh, uh, and I'm not going to pronounce it right. Uh, Rorschach. 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 Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Rorschach enough. test. Yeah. <laughs> I, would, I don't think it's quite cool. a Rorschach test. I think maybe, <laughs> maybe we, we have some uh, video anti-aliasing going on. It might make it a little harder to see, but uh, definitely check out. We're going to have stuff in the show notes, I'm sure. So go check out. And also go to, or now it's Art's page on Facebook. You can go check out the logo now. <laughs> yeah, That's totally. That's for true. you, man. <laughs> Go to the kind of everywhere there. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Yeah. So uh, Clay from uh, Car Corel Training, uh, it's not Corel Training. It's uh, Training in Corel. Uh, yes, indeed. Oh, no, it is CorelTrainer.com. Sorry. <laughs> Good grief. I'm really losing it today. Uh, he says, cool logo, Joe. Uh, he says mine has registration marks in it again to kind of give that that feel. Cool. Yeah, yeah totally. for sure. Okay. So. It kind of comes back to this design and style guide uh, document for your shop. So, so tell us about kind of that process. You know, what, what's what's that part look like? 
Yeah, sure. So uh, with my background in graphic design, I've seen a handful of design and style guides in the past, yeah. right? Yeah, <laughs> probably a few. <laughs> um, a little more ets with it, but uh, so um, my recommendation to people that are going to go through this process is use one of the design and style guides that you have on hand. I used one of my customers as kind of a template for mine, and you just swap out your logos and colors and things to make it look visually representative, you know, in a nice way. And that's really that, you know, all kind of takes really. And, um, you know, if you've never seen a design and style guide before, just think of the first large corporation you can think of off the top of your head, type their name into Google and put design and style guide behind it. The majority of them will have it on their website somewhere. Easy targets for this would be like Facebook and other social media outlets. Um, if you check theirs out, like Facebooks, they're going to have a little more information in there, like when you're doing video and stuff like that, how, how the logo is supposed to be represented. But <clears throat> you can also get a little education there about how Facebook's logo is supposed to be printed and what circumstances. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> And then yep. um, <clears throat> what trouble you're going to get into. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. How close it's supposed to be to other social media logos and things of that nature. <laughs> but right. uh, yeah. enough about that. <laughs> <laughs> so, in so. fact, in the in the comments section here, uh, Jeff had posted uh, and, and for some reason, it's not letting me post it on the screen here, but uh, mm. there's a over at uh, HubSpot, he's got a link to the samples of Brandon style guides and stuff like that too. So, oh, cool. really um, cool. Let's see if I can pull that out of here. Yeah, for some reason it's not letting me. I don't know. I'll, I'll have to go back and grab it. But if you go back into the comments here, if you're uh, come check it out over at Facebook, caught, excuse me, Facebook.com slash two regular guys. That's the number two regular guys. You can <laughs> check that out. Um, good stuff there. All right. Well, where, where are we at here? I think we got through most of the, the good stuff, but yeah. I, I also wanted to show. So this all came together and I wanted to show people your, your website here as well. And we'll put it up as a, as a full screen here. So, um, you know, you've, obviously taken and we've got all your colors there. We've got the logos, the, uh, right. you know, your tagline, tell us about your tagline there. I, I love that too. Oh yeah. So that's, uh, relates back to our story, which our story, we actually print on the backside of our shop shirts too. And I'm just going to read the story because that's the easiest way to explain it. Awesome. Yeah. So, um, what we love the most about what we do is seeing our work in everyday life. There's no greater feeling than knowing that someone loves wearing the t-shirt that we designed and printed for them. We want every t-shirt that we print to be someone's new favorite t-shirt, a t-shirt that they love so much they think that it deserves a spot in their closet on a hanger. So that's kind of the motivation at the shop. What we're going through every day with every order that comes through is, you know, we got to get this to where, you know, they get it and they're going to want to put it on a hanger. We actually take it as far as to with the orders, give them hangers. <laughs> okay. So, so I mean, but that, that's all part of your brand. It's all part of your, your style. That's, yeah, that's, that's all, all the marketing strategy. Yeah. And yeah, like every cool. time those people go into their closet and look at that shirt and it's on the hanger and the hanger has the or now art logo on it. That's just imprinting it back in their minds, you know, yeah. keep it top of mind for the next future project. Yeah. That's so what, really what is, what is that kind of, add to your your costs as far as the hangers i mean it, it's something that you can buy in bulk and, and probably yeah easy do, to do i think the first order I, I purchased i got about 500 of them so you know how production runs are you buy more they're less expensive i, th I believe they ran like a dollar 50 a piece so in all honesty that's just something that for the sake of branding and how effective it is in my yeah. opinion it's just something yeah. i would honestly eat <laughs> yeah, for sure. And, and, I mean, that, and that's the point that I wanted to make to everybody is that, you know, that that dollar fifty that you're spending there comes back tenfold at least because, like you said, yeah. they've got it in their closet. They and see it. Here's what ready the hangers for their next look show. like too. So yeah, oh, it's awesome, cool. Laser engraved on there. So so laser Very engraved cool. wooden hangers. There's quality in that, folks. Yep. If you who are on the podcast, uh, you have to see. This is definitely something to go to the video for. Um, and that's something I've, I teach whenever I do uh, pricing classes, I teach this. There, I, we had two shirts that sold in two different places. One was six bucks, one was 60. The entire thing was context and packaging. Same shirt, one of them was sold in a boutique in a nice little box that looked like a patent leather purse that had a foil stamp on it. Let me tell you, that box didn't that's cost nice. as much as that hanger. 
No, so, yeah, absolutely not. That was like a 50 cent <laughs> box, guys. So context and branding can <laughs> actually improve your bottom line. That, and honestly, the other thing I, I always talk about is style guides, and I'm gonna jump in on you a little bit. Learning to do this with your own company also allows you to do this with other companies. You can help people who are small, medium businesses may not have a style guide of their own, establish their own style and help them do some of this work. And then you become the natural person to help them finish their branding. So, I mean, knowing about the style guide, it's not just about working on your purpose. It's about helping because ultimately with uh, with a decorated apparel, we really are helping people brand. I mean, we are a, a branding option. We're a publisher for a type of uh, promotion. So really knowing how to promote yourself is knowing how to service your clients. It's really awesome stuff. Yeah, on that note, if anyone, any of the regulators, listeners out there need help with theirs as they're going through the process, I'm open to questions because it's only going to be practice for me when our customers come through the door asking the same thing. Right yeah. on. Yeah, totally. <laughs> okay. Well, one one last thing that I wanted to to point out here, Joe, and yeah, again, just want to give you give you kudos here, basically, because I think other people need, need to. I, I, here's what I. Besides the fact that everything's really clear here, you know, you've got a nice background and it's clean, it's easy. You have a call to action. Okay? <laughs> I mean, yep. And that's what people miss. You know, <clears throat> normally people's call to action are way down at the bottom. You have to dig through it and, you, you know, you're posting all this other stuff. Call us today right here. <clears throat> and then, you know what, if they don't want to call you, they can put in request a quote. It's, I mean, you don't have to scroll at all to be able to get in touch with Joe. Yes. And, and that's huge. I think that's a huge uh, thing that you're doing very well that most people do very poorly. So, well, uh, and doesn't that, that, what I love is that your page is also fitting in with what you've already told us is your stated, you know, way of operating. It's honest. It's the information is easy and straightforward and you've taken out the extra compli the complexities. That's, that's awesome. Yeah, the development of that uh, landing page was more, you know, I have to credit learning from Shirt Lab as well. So <laughs> cool, cool. Well, but Good see, for the guy to Shirt Lab. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But like you said, you know, that was your first uh, first event you went to. You first went and got information event. and yeah. uh, definitely will then took that information and actually put it into play. And I, I right. you know, I see that a lot too, where people go and yeah. they get all excited. And like I said, you want to come back on Sunday and build your logo, but you said, hold on a second, let's take this whole big picture and put that into play in your business. And, you know, from the conversations I've had with you to the side, I think it's done well for you. So um, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, what, uh, what do we miss? Anything we missed Joe? I don't believe so. That was the end of my notes. <laughs> All right. Good. Good, good, good. So where can where can people connect with you and, and find out more? Um probably the most effective way to reach out to me would be via email. And my email address is Joe at ortnowart.com. And hopefully, yeah, it's on the website, you know. Yep. Yeah, or submit a quote request, that. even if it's not a quote request, you just need okay. help. That that comes to me automatically. I'm gonna I'm going to so. submit a quote request and just have you your favorite quote from the uh, podcast today. So that'll be good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, no, just kidding. All uh -oh. right. Good stuff. Cool, Joe. Awful, well, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, you were, you were a rock star. Uh, awesome. And thank we you. really appreciate sharing. And I think uh, lots of great stuff for people to take, take with them. And uh, we will catch you again soon, Joe. Awesome. Thanks for having me again. <laughs> Absolutely. Gosh, that was so All cool right. to have like a personal story. I mean, to, to go through Joe's process with him like that, uh, you can't get that anywhere else. So everybody really listen back to this one. That was just textbook what you want to do when you get back from learning something like this. So very cool to get to walk through that with Joe. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, tons of great information there. And yeah, just like practical stuff that you can be using today that, that, uh, you know, I think mm -hmm. we'll, we'll change things for you a lot. I, it, I, we get, I think as decorators, as small business owners in general, we get uh, kind of stuck in the day-to-day, -day, you know, I got to get this screen burned. I've got to digitize this thing. I've got to take the trash out. I've got to pay the bill. I've got to oh, deal yeah. with this or that or the other thing. And and that's, you know, obviously part of running a business and you have to do that stuff and do it well. Sure. But you also have to take a t time to step back and, uh, you know, this to me all comes back to what you and I and, and Terry have preached for years. You know, you've got to 
work on your business, not in your business all the time. And and that's what Joe clearly did with the style guide. And, and oh, yeah. uh, obviously, like I said, I, from the outside looking in, wow, good stuff. The website, the the brand, the story, you know, and, and people disconnect with that. And I, and I love it, you know, heck, well, I, I'd, I connect with that. So <laughs> I mean, the thing that was crazy about it is one of the very first things he said about this. And I mean, once again, major props to Jay, Jay Bissell, friend of the show for putting this together. Cause it's a, it was an easy way for him to get there, but he really stopped and, and internalized this and said, this is the reason for my company to exist. When we talk about purpose statements, I don't think people get to the place where they're saying that's what it is, but seriously, you need to know why you're there. And I know some people just say, make money, get orders. <laughs> There's got to be more than that to keep motivated long term. Trust me, I've been in the get money, make orders happen <laughs> chain and it doesn't yeah. always feel, fulfill you enough. But yeah. when you have a real purpose, people get invested in what you do. I mean, that makes me think of um, when we first did Thread X and listened to Mel Lay and talking about her story and her purpose and what she was yeah. about. And it, solidifying it in your branding also helps you do all the storytelling and the social media. Once you have that foundation, everything flows from that foundation, all your branding, all your marketing, your voice everywhere, your, your packaging, everything starts to get in line when you stop and take that time. That's something we don't often do. I mean, I know, especially a lot of the people in embroidery world, when we're, when we're talking about starting new businesses, they're like, I like to make embroidery. And so they just start doing it but they don't think about the rest of what it means to brand business and market. I think if they stopped to do something like this, it would make it a lot easier. You wouldn't have this weirdness of, I don't know what to say. How do I represent myself? Stop and think about that ahead of time. Yeah. And then you establish that voice and a little bit, of, and sometimes a little distance from it. So you can say, here, I'm speaking as the company right now. And it makes sense to you that way. Yeah. So it's totally. just really cool stuff. So yeah, the reason for your company to be there, big deal. <laughs> Good stuff. Awesome. All right. Well, Eric, man, we've uh, we've had a great day. I want one more comment to to share here. Uh, right Marcia, just this is more of a really cool story to me. Uh, my daughter was just hired to teach embroidery, screen printing, marketing, and so much more in a high school. So I love that they're, Very they're teaching cool. the tech skills in high school. We definitely need more of that. That's a big passion of mine. And uh, she says, I've sent her this info and the link to the page. Uh, you two guys will be a great resource for her. So, Oh, um, absolutely. And reach out personally, Marcy, seriously, anything we can do. And I know like our sponsor too uh, does some stuff for uh, with our software for school. So yeah, reach out always trying nice. to get more embroiderers doing that because i mean seeing like skills usa is super exciting for print and i want to see more embroiderers get nice. out there and do that too nice so uh, another comment about joe here joe has always had a great work ethic and personal interest in everything he does all his life so um really cool stuff there and uh, awesome. uh, so Good. Cool. All right. Well, uh, Eric, upcoming events here, just so we can kind yeah. of wrap this up and, and uh, move out of the way for today here. <laughs> uh, um, first and foremost, I have to uh, give props to my wife. She is going to be doing her first Facebook Live today. And uh, in fact, at one o'clock, awesome. I will be producing it for her. And she is uh, Very cool. uh, not been sleeping and um, she's scared to death, but she is going to rock and roll it you know so this has been a big fear of hers and her and i were able to go to that uh, jack canfield event and one of the big things that he talked about during that event was uh, face uh, face your fears and do it anyways so that's what she's doing <laughs> i'm and and that's so yeah awesome. check that awesome. out over at facebook.com slash we heart dot biz and uh, you'll probably find links all over over in mind and stuff like that. I'll, I'll put a link here in the, the Facebook, uh, two regular guys Facebook here shortly. So cool. first wanted to shout out to her. Um, I've got Small Business Saturdays happening tomorrow where I'm going to be uh, actually doing an overview of what we learned up there at the One Day to Greatness seminar from Jack Canfield. Nice. So uh, I took a bunch of pictures and, and all my notes and stuff like that, trying to pull it all together. And so going to try to keep it 30 minutes most likely not. <laughs> it's going to be long. So, uh, <laughs> not bad. So, yeah, no. So, I'm looking forward to that. And then uh, the Saturday after that, I have uh, Todd Dowling, who's a regular listener here at Two Regular Guys. He's going to be joining me on Small Saturdays, and we're just going to talk about kind of managing our time and and how you know small business owners. Before the show got started, you and I were talking with Joe about all the different hats that we wear and and all the different things that happen. You know, an employee goes on vacation and now you've got to add an extra hat to it. You know, so how do you manage that? Or the people that, you know, uh, have a full time job and mm -hmm. are doing this as a side hustle. And, you know, so how yeah, do you sure. manage getting everything done that needs to uh, 
to be done. So um, I think I'll be tuning in on that, that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that'll be on the twentieth. So um, good Always. stuff coming there. Uh, and then last thing for me, uh, I'm going to be hosting. Uh, in November, November 11th, 2019 of this year, I will be doing a web webinar called Becoming a Digital Marketing Superhero. We're going to be talking about social media and email marketing in depth. So uh, looking forward to that. It's going to be a uh, $49 event normally, but I'm going to have some specials for two regular guys, listeners coming up. I'm still putting all the details together. Don't even have a, a page other than you can sign up. So if you'll, you'll sign up and we'll see if I can pop this up while I'm talking. That's always fun. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, see the you pants. Head, there we go. You head over <laughs> there to, you go. Uh, Aaron Montgomery info slash marketing. Uh, you can sign up there for, uh, early information. I've got a couple of tools that I'm building um, that uh, will also be given out to those people that sign up free. So right. um, uh, yeah, so I just, uh, yeah, sign up there and that you'll be the first ones to get the information and uh, that that's happening. What about you, Eric? What do you got coming up? Well, I always like to pump up the stuff that I'm doing in publishing right now. So this month in Printware Magazine, you're going to find the Eric's Embellishments column dealing with nice. design analysis. Uh, so all of you embroidery geeks and you digitizing hopefuls, you erstwhile digitizers, get out there now because you're going to learn how to analyze existing designs and how to recreate them in the digital edition. So go to printwaremag.com and you can go ahead and hit that link. Uh, the current digital edition will have that in there and all about measuring designs analyzing them and figuring out how to replicate things in your own digitizing. Uh, it's big digitizing heavy month because we also have out there in uh, Images Magazine in the UK. I've got a piece called uh, As Easy as ABC and it's all about digitizing lettering. People have a lot of trouble with this and this one's a little basic. It's not gonna go deeply into small lettering but it does go into how to put glyphs together for embroidery and so just a quick article, a couple pages. But for people who really don't know how to break apart a letter into objects for embroidery, this is going to help you out. So digit this is your month. Jump out there and check that out at images-magazine.com. Cool thing with these, everybody always asks me, like, where am I going to get um, resources to learn digitizing, to learn embroidery? Go out there and check the magazines because the current month is almost always completely freely available digitally. And you can also download the PDF so you have it for later. Um, cool. Even if you don't have archives from being subscribed, and a lot of them have free subscription business owners. So if you're a person yeah. who wants to see this stuff, get out and check out Printware Images uh, Impressions. They all have um, things you can do. And like I also said, the, the stuff from Images Magazine, if you can get over that they regularize some of my spelling to put the O-U-R in color, um, <laughs> then <laughs> you can get all the British magazines and the European magazines too in the same way. So go check yeah. those out and get some information there. Uh, also, more events to be announced. I can't announce anything yet, but it looks like there may be one more teaching event this year that I wasn't originally planning uh, nice. later on, maybe in October. We don't have details yet, but if <laughs> when we do have details, if everything pans out, uh, there'll be one more teaching event for me this year that I usually don't do. Excellent. So uh, stay tuned here at ericcampbell.com as well, and there may be some more teaching events from me and also a little bit for, from the folks at Jim Brilliant. So good stuff that may be coming up later if you stay tuned. Very cool. Awesome. All right. Well, Terry's got a couple of things coming up here that I wanted to share. Uh, July 20th and the 21st, he will be hosting his complete screen printing business course at uh, Workhorse Products there in Phoenix. So um, if you want to go check out Arizona heat and know what 115 degrees feels like, <laughs> it's time to do it. Everything's air conditioned. Everything's indoors. Everything's awesome. So don't worry about the heat. And then, you know, then you get to say you survived in Arizona summer. So it'll be good stuff. Uh, sign up at terrycombs.com for that. Uh, and then August 24th to the 25th, uh, he will be in Chicago at Atlas Screen Supply, uh, having that same course, the complete screen printing business course. So uh, get over to atlasscreensupply.com to uh, register for that one. And uh, you can find all of his upcoming events at terrycombs.com under the tab tour dates. He has, uh, uh, he, he, he's actually been very good at keeping it up uh, with a lot of poking from me. So uh, I feel like I've done my job to uh, keep him, keep him up to date. So Marcy no, says, you haven't teased him about most of this for a while. You haven't teased him about his Twitter followers for a little bit. I, I mean, know. it's, he's been doing pretty good. He has been. I feel like. Like all of my teasing is finally paying off. So <laughs> me being a jerk uh, is, is paying tough. off. That's right. We're going to call it tough love. <laughs> okay, right. so Marcy says, no, thanks. Lived in Arizona and can't do it. Uh, I'm right there with you, Marcy. But uh, hey, you know what? It, it, the class is worth, worthless. So um, and then Marcy says, Atlas is, is where my daughter is going for her first event in our industry. Absolutely. Good nice. stuff there. Perfect. So, yeah, Absolutely. looking forward to, to meeting her and, and uh, 
getting her involved. Hey, maybe she wants to come on the two regular guys podcast and tell her story as she gets this thing going. I, as you guys Absolutely. know, education and uh, training are, are young people in a skill, you know, where they don't have to go to a four year and be so far in debt that they can't function the rest of their <laughs> life um, <laughs> is very big passion project of mine. So anyhow, all right, <laughs> Eric, I think we've done as much damage as we can do for one day. Don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> I like to think we taught some people stuff. I know Joe took one note, so <laughs> we, we tried. <laughs> the, the, very, yeah, excellent, excellent. All right, well, Eric, so we've uh, come to the close of another show. I want to thank Joe Ortnow of Ortnow Art for his time and discussing the design and style guide. Again, make sure you check him out over at ortnowart.com and I'm sure you can find him on Facebook and every, everywhere else. Very cool guy. Plus, he's a volleyball player, so... We obviously know he's an awesome dude just from that alone. Right. <laughs> so it was great to have him and, and really good information. And, uh, you know, thanks to Jay for, for uh, his stuff and everybody ping Jay and find out when his uh, style guide template is going to be available. <laughs> Accountability, that's, uh, buddy. <laughs> yeah, that's right. There you go. <laughs> uh, good stuff. So, um, yeah. Right. Thanks. And then also thanks to the uh, the regulators, too. You guys have been Absolutely. awesome today. We didn't get to every single comment, but uh, we appreciate you guys tuning in, participating. It's what it's all about. It's community here at uh, Two Regular Guys. Uh, we so. are here for you, folks. And uh, yep. once again, heartfelt thanks for sponsors at Embrilliance and Brighton Leap. And we encourage you to check out their family products at Embrilliance.com. And remember, mm -hmm. they, they got that code out there. So the code 2RG. And you can get 10% off anything in their store. So once again, thank you for being our gold sponsor. Yeah, they had the awesome stuff from them. Uh, Cindy Knight said, oh, great. I missed it all. A customer came in. <laughs> Excellent part about all this, Cindy, is, you know what? As soon as this is over, it'll still be right there. You can rewind from the beginning or uh, subscribe to our, our podcast. Just go over to tworegularguys.com and you can check out uh, where to subscribe to the podcast so you can listen in your car later on. Uh, great stuff. So next week, uh, Eric, we're going to have uh, Deborah Korn back with Very us cool. the uh, from Print Media Center. We're going to be talking convergence and and we're getting closer and closer to uh, Printing United. And uh, I think this is yeah. going to be a must must attend event where uh you know what was the sgi expo has just kind of been rebranded as printing united it's not you know S the expo has not gone away it's just kind of been rebranded here and it's going to bring in more i mean you're going to get even more so we used to talk about how sga was like this big event that you had to see to see the scope of it well, yeah, printing dude. united is going to be even bigger it's unbelievable so, i can't yeah. imagine my first sgia made my head spin i mean there was so much going on there and so much more than just the garment side of the world in fact the garment side is just a tiny fraction of it so yeah. print united is going to be incredible yeah yeah I, I think you you may have uh I, I think i may have run into you at your first sgia event if i remember right yeah so, i believe yes, so, your yeah. head was spinning <laughs> I'm no, like, here, sit down let's have a drink <laughs> <laughs> very well needed after sgia but if you haven't been yeah. it is very much jumping both feet first into the pool of decorating everything <laughs> <laughs> totally, totally all right so i guess with that we are finished for the day and uh until we see you guys next week i'm eric campbell sitting in for terry combs he's aaron montgomery and we are the two regular guys Thank you for listening to Two Regular Guys. Check out our website at tworegularguys.com. That's the number two, regularguys.com. You can also interact with us over at our Facebook page, facebook.com slash tworegularguys, or send us a tweet, twitter.com slash tworegularguys. And we have a YouTube page. You can find all that from our website, tworegularguys.com. Thanks for tuning in, and we look forward to spending some time with you again next week.